Welcome to Catherine Raker's World. Innovation. Culture. Adventure. Fashion and health. Artists. Destinations. Traditions. This is Catherine Raker's World. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of Catherine Raker's World. Our guest today is Dario Saldana, and he is originally from Mexico, mm -hmm. and he lives in Louisville, Kentucky. Correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And I want to welcome you to my show today. Buenos dias. Thank you. Buenos dias, Catherine. Oh, you're welcome. You know, um, I love South America. I love Mexico. I really love Spain mm -hmm. because I spent three years there. Tell us where you're from originally. I was born in Monterrey. Mexico? Monterey, Mexico. Yes. And we came over when I was one month old. One month. Yeah. yeah so you still have a little bit of an accent. Yes, I try and keep it because that's that's, that's my culture. Very, there's, mm -hmm. That's your culture. You know, I have to share this with you. My family is, my father's family is all from Poland. So they grew up with, uh, in Polish schools, in a Polish church. So my father was first generation. So I learned a little bit, not the greatest words in the world, but <laughs> my dad wanted to, he didn't want to be in the Polish fabric. He, even though he lived it, he wanted to be very Americanized. So he didn't teach us the language, which was really sad. Mm -hmm. So you taught your children, right? No, I no? did not. That was, that was a bad, a bad, like your dad, a bad choice of not, of help, not doing that. Them. We grew up on the border. So there was no need for anybody really to learn English because 90% of the people on the border in El Paso are all Mex Mexico, oh, Mexico, they all spoke South American. Spanish. Okay. Oh, you all spoke Spanish. Uh, everybody spoke Spanish. And, and my daughter, I'm lucky, um, She, when she was in high school, she learned Castilian. And um, she still uses uh, uh, Spanish language today mm -hmm. uh, with all of her patients because she's in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. But before that, she was in California. So I would say she speaks maybe 40% of the time Spanish. In Spanish. Right. Mm. And my little granddaughter has picked up a lot of that because her first nanny was from Mexico. Okay. So I think that makes a difference. You grew up in a, what I call, would you consider it a foodie family? Oh, absolutely. Using, using that word. A absolutely. Without us really understanding or knowing what it was right. about. You know, I've been helping everything from killing pigs, uh, killing my first chicken. Right. Uh, killing our first goats, which were pets. That was but probably that was them. probably tough. It it was tough, but you know it, yeah. it was delicious. It was necessary because yeah. we didn't have too much food. Right. You know we picked a lot of food from the desert. We ate a lot of uh, cactus, a lot of prickly pears, right. A lot of collard greens from the river. I love that we collard. Served. Love collard we greens. We milked the goats, and my and my mom would make cheese, and wow. she would make her own corn tortillas, grinding on a metate. Right. And and that's yeah. So, so you grew food, up with that the old world style instead of americanized everything absolutely absolutely you know she uh, we had you can tell the difference the minute you uh, taste it right well you know red peppers right you know uh, we always had dry peppers my mom would soak them in water right and on the little molcajete she would grind it and make a salsa wow. out of it and mix that with uh, with cactus or with cabrito with goat and put mm -hmm. it in a tortilla, and that, that was our meal. So everything was from literally from scratch. So actually, the original Mexican, if you want to call it Mexican or South American food, wasn't really that fattening. It, it really wasn't, was it? Absolutely not. No, no, there was no processed food. You know, we minimal. I grew up minimal without salt. processed food myself. So, you know, yeah. goat cheese, natural goat cheese, uh, everything was, was very, very fresh, very... And I used to envy the kids in school that had bologna sandwiches or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because, mm -hmm. you know, I thought they were uh, a, more richer. <laughs> and all we had were burritos made with eggs and beans and cactus. And Do you know, like my, my granddaughter loves, loves Mexican food. She absolutely, rice and beans were, when she lived out in California, that's what she wanted. Mm -hmm. She wanted a tortilla every day. <laughs> I mean, it, it was... 
to the point where, you know, I would use to make uh, for her when I was staying out there all these different wonderful things. And, and you know, um, she just loves it. And she's a chef now. She's a little chef. She <laughs> thinks she's a star of the show at age almost nine. But um, so you... So you grew up in El Paso, and you met your wife there? No. 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 Uh, I, I've had two wives. Two wives. One, and, and we, we met the first one in the Navy when I was in the oh, Navy. Oh, you were in the military. I was in the military. Awesome. And we met Thank there. you for your service. Thank you. You're welcome. We, we got married and had two children, and then we moved to Kansas. Kansas, of all places. Of all places. And, and then, uh, oh, I went to college before we went to Kansas. I right. got my degree in, in right. microbiology and biochemistry. Really? Mm -hmm. And, and, and then, you uh, became a chef. This is even funnier. Well, but then, no, that's true. Um, I, I wasn't smart enough to become a doctor, so I had to do something with my two uh, technical degrees. Uh, so I decided to get into food. That's so my, good. my first job was with Baltimore Spice Company. Wow. So I learned everything about spices, how to grind them, how to separate them, how to taste them, which really gave me a solid foundation in the product development aspect of it, to see which spices which seasonings blended together, which ones fought, which ones enhanced, which one toned down. And it really was a solid basis for the product development you know, career that I was going to have That you later. were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what I did because you know I'm allergic to garlic. Right. And the reason why I am, just to let you know, is that I lost my gallbladder. I can't digest right. it. So the chef I know that's the Spice King in mm -hmm. Cincinnati, he actually came up with a spice blend for me to use instead of garlic. So, and a lot of the times when I make food, people don't, I do use garlic in my food for other people, but a lot of times they don't know if I've made a dish with garlic or with not. So, because hmm. it's really not supposed hmm. to be Emerald's way, or so much garlic that it's ridiculous, it's supposed to give you another, it's supposed to blend, to me, it's supposed to blend in to make the dish more more flavorful. Am I right or wrong? Enhancing. And enhancing it's, it. It's, it's an enhancing. enhancement. What you're doing is providing a seasoning. If you're tasting one seasoning that's overwhelming, then it's failed. You have to have something that you've got a nuance. It's got a blend. Top note. Uh, side note, front, back, and it all blends together. So right. absolutely. Right. So that was the challenge for me. The challenge for me actually was to learn that I was allergic to that because, you know, I just, it just got worse and worse and worse. And so finally I figured it out. And there's more and more people today with allergies than ever before. So chefs have to tend to, especially in restaurant situations, accommodate. Mm -hmm. And so when I walk in and the chef says, I can't do it, I have to leave. Oh, wow. And that's hard. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, let's talk about you. Let's talk about how this transitioned and, and you came into, into Louisville and how you started your product line. Tell me about that. Well, one of the things that I had an opportunity when we were in Texas, and, you know, I have a friend. His name is Mark Littman. Oh, Littman? Oh, yeah, I know I, him. I met him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he uh, set up some interviews and some right. people to meet in, in the Cincinnati and Louisville area. So I ended right. up ultimately in Louisville. In, in Louisville. Mm -hmm. So I work for a company in, in product development. Mm -hmm. uh, so we made barbecue, we made side dishes, entrees, casseroles, and things like that. Right. And um, I worked for them, and about three years uh, after that, they had a cutback, so I lost my job. So that wow. was the first time that I had to do something. So I came up with a little soup line. Called hung, hungry chef, yeah, hungry chef, H hungry chef, okay. soup line, fresh. So I bartered with one of the local manufacturers some production time. So I All developed right. the products. Right. I went there and I gave him some technical uh, support, uh, right. uh, research and development, uh, technical advice, and he helped me. Uh, let me use his production facility to make my soups. So I made six soups. I All went garlic, to, right? Oh, well, with garlic, of course. So you know, I went and talked to the the local Kroger. And they right. gave me six stores. Oh, they uh, gave me six so stores. I would take my older kids in there, make the soups in the production facility, uh, cool them down, label them, and then we deliver them uh, to the, the, the six Kroger stores. Kroger stores that, How that long we, ago was that? That was in 2001 to 2003. Wow. And so you was, had a nice run with them. It was a, a, a nightmare, to a tell nightmare, you the truth. Actually? The, the, 
And I realized that it doesn't matter how good the products are, if you don't have a strong marketing program to promote and to tell people about it, it's not going to work. Let so, me ask you this question. Did you do a lot of sampling? We, we were at the stores. You we were, were at, at the, the stores. stores. <laughs> so did you find that or what? Was the absolutely, absolutely. You know, one of the things that I did find at that time was that the uh, opportunity to grow and, and, and establish a solid presence and more than that, developing a marketing program to, to promote and do signage and stuff, I didn't have the, the capital to do that. I you was didn't... spending all my money sending my kids to school right. and feeding the family. So what's and... different today than then? Than, than? <laughs> Not much. The kids are older. The, the kids, kids are, are older. Are they still in college? Uh, I have one getting her PhD at Princeton, so she's she's got another two years. One, the la the youngest one just finished right. college in St. Louis. Right. So I still have one uh, finishing up her. So how do, so how may I ask you? So you're actually a working chef now, I, correct? I, I I work. I do a lot of catering. But okay. the products that I have now, mm -hmm. uh, I've developed over the last four years. Okay. And I. Go brought, ahead. Brought together, brought together um, a deli meat. A company wanted an Hispanic deli meat. Okay. So I had launched a line of Hispanic foods in 2005. So we, on that note, uh, we're going to take a short break. Okay. We have to do this because guess what? We have sponsors. Okay, we'll be right back uh, with Dario and your last name again. Saldana. Saldana. And the name mm. of your products? Comidas de mi abuela. Foods of my grandmother. Foods of your grandmother. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll be right back on Catherine Raker's World. We're back on Catherine Raker's World. You know, and I do, um, Dario, I do... Uh, lots of things all over the world, as you probably saw on some of the videos and stuff like that. And I can't wait to taste this because, believe it or not, I love cheesecake. Would you give the pronunciation of your name again? And is this a company that you have? Would you give that as well? Yes. My name is Dario Saldana. 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 The name of my company is Abuelas Foods. Abuelas? Abuelas? Abuelas Food. Foods. Okay. Foods of my grandmother. And the product line that we're launching is comidas de mi abuela, foods of my grandmother. Comidas de mi abuela. De la abuela. De mi abuela, yeah. Abuela. Foods of my grandmother. Right. We're basically targeting the second generation Hispanic. Right. Is what we're doing. Second, third generation. Gen Z's and millennials mm -hmm. influence the, the flavors of the line. Right. Well, you know, you brought three or four flavors for me to try because I can't have the deli meats right mm -hmm. because they have garlic in them but is this like a caramelized um yes one of the things that we found is that uh dulce de leche caramel uh made the traditional way is almost impossible to make in this country because it takes so long to make three or really? four, four hours yes four to make a, to hours? caramelize to caramelize the sugar and to get the product made. Right. Consequently, what we have here is something that we have developed that simulates and gives you the semblance of a dulce de leche that's made. Dulce de leche is made in pretty much in every Hispanic country. Right. The best one that comes out of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Buenos Aires. Okay. And being Mexican, I've got my idea of what a dulce de leche is. So this is a product that's no high fructose corn syrup. It's very clean ingredients made with condensed milk and sugar and vanilla. So it's a very clean ingredient all the way through. Actually, it's delicious. So this one? Uh, I'm, I'm inviting you to come <laughs> with me. No, we did a show, I have to tell you, where we did it with caramel, iced uh, for apples and for different strawberries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I kept on telling my gal, you need to let it keep on cooking. It's mm -hmm. not caramelizing. It's like water. People don't understand how long it right. takes, right? Right. So what I want to do is I want to stop for a minute. I want to go over there and get the okay. other products and try it. This is absolutely delicious. 
when we designed this, Catherine, we designed it first with a fruit as a topping, kind of like a fondue with the intent, like make, let's right. say you went to a restaurant, you ordered all four flavors and served a big heaping of the, of the fruit and dipped at it. And then right. my wife said, why don't we use it as a topping? So this she made last night. She made this it's, cheesecake last night, more a New York style, a little bit firmer. And right. now we've learned that we can put it on cheesecake, we can put it on everything. We have four flavors. Wow. Dulce de leche. This is the dulce de leche with red pepper that gives oh, you. I, a I little, did. A you know, I, got, I want to. I want to try that one more time because I. I thought I'd tasted it, but. But it doesn't overwhelm you. It gives you a little background note. Again. Oh, I got the, it. One of the things that we talked about earlier. If it overwhelms you, we have failed. This product enhances the, the sweetness. I feel the heat in the end. And then it disappears. It disappears. It, it disappears. Right. So we have another one, dulce de leche, that's just dulce de leche without the red pepper. Okay, so we're, I'm going to go over and okay. I'm going to put these on, if you don't mind, some fruit. No. And, and bring these over. So I'm going to take, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do this, if that's all right. Now this is the what? This Chocolate? is a tamarind. The what? This is tamarindo. Okay. Tamarind is a, is a native to uh, Southeast Asia uh -huh. and uh, central part of the... Uh, of middle Americas. We're back and we're tasting your wonderful toppings. Would you call them toppings? Toppings, that's what we're calling okay. them. So yes. now, I love chocolate. Sorry, but I do. So tell me a little bit about this, and I'm gonna put this up here. This what is, is this is a dark chocolate chili lime. Chili. Chili lime. Chili. Yes, and one of the things that I learned when I was m watching a movie called Chocolat, if you've ever seen it, mm -hmm. the lady I was trained in Mayan cuisine, and she put chili pepper in everything. And that chili pepper in the, in the chocolate brings flavor notes out of, of the chocolate. And you can taste it, but it's kind of like a background note, wow. along with the lime, also to give it a little piquant, but, you know, understanding that this it's not is. Well. It doesn't hit you like, no. at all no, until the very end. At the, at the very end, right. Right. And, but, and you know, the Greeks, the Greeks with their chili, mm -hmm. with their, you know, Skyline chili and stuff like that, they use chocolate. And that's right. Yeah, they do. I, I used to sell their franchises. I really like that. So, again, it's very different. We wanted it more dark chocolate than... than uh, uh, milk chocolate. I want to just try the chocolate the without chocolate, anything. The chocolate by itself. Oh, it's really nice. Yeah, it's got a nice flavor. Nice flavor to it. Okay, so now I'm going to try the caramel again. The caramel, the dulce de leche. Right. Yes, again, the dulce de leche is made using condensed milk mm -hmm. and sugar. We mm -hmm. caramelize the sugar, and so you have a body that, that comes at you without using a high fructose corn syrup. Right now, the main manufacturer that's selling, that's merchandising at the stores, I don't want to mention the name, but they use a high fructose corn syrup as their number one ingredient. Really? And we wanted, one of the things that I wanted to do, Catherine, was mm -hmm. keep the ingredient label clean. Mm -hmm. I figured if I can't pronounce it, it has no business in the food. I shouldn't be eating it. So these are very clean ingredient statements that gives you round out a lot of flavor. This is delicious. With and with and without, wait a minute, with the pepper and without. And, and this with, is the one without, without the, pepper. the pepper. Yes. I'm going to put that right there. I haven't tried this one yet. Hmm. Okay. Tamarind. Now, this now, is a tamarindo. Tamarindo. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of Hispanic countries, Central American and South American, mm -hmm. and specifically the Mexicans, they take, it's made out of a pod that, that grows on trees okay. that's got seeds in it. They take it, they remove the hard shell, then they seep it in, in hot water, boil it. Okay. So you get that the bulk from right. from the pod, uh -huh. and, and you can have tamarindo drinks. You have it in a lot of the Mexican places. Okay. They have all that, the waters. The waters. And what okay. I did, I took that flavor profile and decided to put it in as a, as a offering on the side, as a topping. For, I'm going to try it. So it's it's a very, uh, you let you can describe it and see what you get out of it. Hmm. I but that again. it's a sweet and sour. Sweet and sour. Sweet and sour. And then even and with strawberries, it makes it even. I'm not sure. Yeah. 
It goes great with mangoes. Goes great with bananas. Let me it's try this. By itself. I think with mangoes and bananas yes. that would be really good. Mm -hmm. I think I think the strawberry hides it. Yeah. And I don't know what this would do with it. I want to just try this. See what happens. Very good. I like it a lot. And what we have found, people are going, what is that? What is it? What is that? It's not like anything they've ever tasted before. So the fruit toppings were basically a basis for getting the line uh, Started. together and putting it all together. So what I wanted to do was connect the all the products that I've got from the beginning of a meal to the end. To the end. To, as it, we call now, how do these app. come to get, I mean, when you're packaging these, how do you package them? Right now, Catherine, what we're doing is putting these in food service packs, five pound, four or five pound bags in a, in a case. In a so, food yeah, service. For food, for food service. service. Or a deli operator. Like right now, uh, all the grocery stores are taking product in their back of the house, putting it in their own container, and putting it in their grab-and-go section. Oh, grab and That's go. what we're doing right here. So I'll be providing labels for them to put on and, right. and, and merchandising it that way. Right. That's really a, a, a tremendous idea because a lot of retailers today are doing that, mm -hmm. especially the Kroger's and the Jungle Gyms and Safeway. I mean, there's so many, so many different retailers out there that you have to come up with an idea that's going to be profitable for you, mm -hmm. but also it gives them something different, right. correct? Right. So again, we have part of this line includes meats. Oh, we, it does. We, we have meats. We have five deli meats, products from Argentina, flavored from Argentina with a chimichurri beef. Uh -huh. We've got from Cuba, uh, puerco asado, roast pork, roast pork. from Cuba. Okay. From Mexico, a uh, green chili. Green uh, chili. Pork. Mm -hmm. And from also from Mexico, uh, p uh, pavo, a uh, turkey, and mole sauce. I've got oh, the mole sauce inside. Mole sauce. And then the last one from Guatemala is also a turkey with pineapple in wow. inside the flavor. Pineapple with turkey, yeah. that's very so, so unusual. These, these are very, very unique because there's nothing like that on the market. And what differentiates our deli meats is that we've got the flavor infused into the meat muscle rather than coated on the outside. A lot of the leading deli manufacturers that are out there, uh, their product is coated on the outside, so right. you lose the flavor once you slice it. So these products are, are the inside. That's what differentiates our deli meats. That, that and it's funny that. because uh, my one of my clients, Skip Kenny Mark Chow, actually infuses his meats when he's doing uh, a pig roast or he's mm -hmm. doing a beef or you know a brisket or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's others that don't believe in that, not piercing the meat. Right. So uh, how well is how well are they selling? Well, we haven't started. We're, you haven't we're started. just we're just launching. We're I mean, just we, launching. we have one of the things that I have learned is that Dario is very good at product development and merchandising, but I needed some help on the sales side. Oh. So I hired a gentleman okay. that's got thirty years experience in Florida. Right. And he has helped me put together the budget, helped put together everything that we need to go into the retailers. And the, and the food service account. That's, so good. that's what, we're, that's that's what great. we're doing. So we're in the process of getting all these launched. So there's 18 products in the product line wow. total. And what we're trying to do is figure out which ones uh, some of the retailers or food service might only want four, five, or six. So we're trying to put together the, the right. best potential. And that's one of the things that you have to think about because, you know, if you have a lot of products, mm -hmm. sometimes like you said, only a few. They'll want to try a few just to see right. how they, they work out. And that's great. So, you know, this is so exciting for you, isn't it? Yes, oh, absolutely. And uh, I bet people are, are, are loving the idea, especially the Hispanic community. You know, here in Cincinnati, I'm, I'm just, we're sitting here right now, um, there's a huge group, mm -hmm. Hispanic uh, chamber. I mean, I belong to a lot of different Hispanic groups over the years all over the country. And we've lived in the South, the West. We lived everywhere because of my husband mm -hmm. and um, working with the military. So, it you know it really changes your palate. Sure. And it's the right. same. It's the same way when you go to a different country. Try the food. Don't be so Americanized that you can't try the food. Right. Because it really changed my um, the way I think about food today, and it makes it exciting to be able to make it in that traditional way. Mm -hmm. So when I go to Asia, I mean, when I eat Asian food here, unless it's a, <laughs> it's really a good Asian chef that 
we know each other and whatever. And I go back to Asia, and I, you know, I miss that. Fl I miss the flavors. Right. And one of the flavors that I love is both in Asia and also in South America is cilantro, my favorite spice in the world. And my husband hates it. <laughs> Why? It's I too don't green. know. Is it too green? Too green for him. Yeah. Too green for him. But it just is so great for your palate. It, it yeah. makes you your your mouth just jump with joy. At least yeah. for me. Yeah. But it can also overwhelm. Yeah, you, you have it all depends upon how much you use. Just a quick little side note on the salsas. My okay. two salsas that I've got, my mom and dad and I and my brothers and sisters used to cook our, our gorditas and tacos and barbacoa on Saturday night. We get up in the morning before church, we go up and down the street ringing the bell, selling that. So those two salsas, Catherine, my mom used to make. Oh, so wow. I duplicated that flavor profile and all my family to the person has tried those salsas and they go, those are my mom's salsas. Right. So those are salsas that you will not find in the grocery store. I will not put now them up against can, anybody. Well, let me put it to you this way. If, if we work together a lot, which I hope we will, you will show me that I can put it without garlic. We can make that, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we, you know what, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of people are doing that same challenge. And you know, there's some companies that are coming out seriously. Sure without onions and without garlic. Mm -hmm. And one of the first companies, and I won't mention their name, I could actually eat their sauce. But um, it was, it, it's so hard. I, I make everything myself anymore because it's just easy and then I know there's no garlic in it, right? Right. So anyhow, I want to thank you for joining me today. It's been such a pleasure, gracias. And I hope you'll come back. My pleasure. And do a cooking show with me. How about that? I would love to do I'd that. Love to do that. That would be fun. And we are going to use your, do you have a website? We do. We're updating it as we speak. Okay, but you might as well go ahead and give it out. It's comidas, C-O-M-I-D-A-S, de, D-E, mi, M-I, abuela, A-B-U-E-L-A dot com. Comidas de mi abuela dot com. All right, and that's great. And we'll put that up there as well. And I want to thank you so much. And don't forget to go to our website, which is CatherineRakersWorld.com. We'll see you soon.